I were to ask you, do you believe? Do you believe in any reality? I am alive. You are alive. That okay. is reality. We are standing in this Hyde Park. Good. That's so, we, do you believe in the reality of the universe? Yeah, it is okay. there. I mean. So, if I were to ask, so even before I was born, the reality was there. Absolutely. Uh, after yeah. when I, you I, die, I, also the reality is there. Right? I totally agree. So, if I were to ask you, where did this reality come from? Where I don't know. That's why I told you. I mean, we are trying to find out. Okay, but have you? You must have thought about it, yeah? Yeah, I did think about it. Because. Living a life, yes, for so long, a human being who is by nature curious, they will, they will somehow ask questions and come to certain understanding. So in all your years of your, of your life, you, when you ask this question, what have you so far gathered from the research that you have done? That's why I told you we don't know. We are still trying to learn. I mean. No, no, but when you, say, when you say you don't know, okay, Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you possible scenarios. Okay. Okay, do you think it could have come from nothing, the universe? There are so many scientific theories put forward, but they're not true. I don't believe in science. Uh, no, no, I'm asking you. Forget about the scientists for now. I'm asking you. Do you think this reality, which we call the universe, it could have come from nothing? From nothing, I don't know. I have to be very honest. Is that even a possibility? Come from nothing. There are possibilities, many possibilities. No, no, nothing. Coming from nothing. Is that even a possibility? I don't know. I could be very hard. Well, I would say no. You know why? Why? Because nothing doesn't even exist. If something doesn't exist, how can it bring about something that does exist? Are you with me? If something no, doesn't even what exist... What I want to ask you is, you're a believer. You believe in God. No, no, before we come to God, I want, I want to tackle this in a logical way because I'm sure you believe at least, you at least have faith in logic, yes? Yeah, I did study logic. I Good, know. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so if you studied logic, then you will come to the conclusion that nothing doesn't exist, hence it cannot bring about something. That argument is very, very far. Dodgy, I think. Why is it dodgy? It's quite logical. No, I don't think so. Okay, if something doesn't exist, imagine something doesn't even exist, yes? Could it bring about something that does exist? These arguments are very, very dodgy. I Why is it dodgy? Yeah. I thought you were good at logic. Yeah. Do you do you think something that doesn't exist? Yes. For example, say for example, um, I don't know, a spaghetti monster, which is the imagination. Yes. Yeah. You can go on and on. And exactly. On. You can imagine many things. Yeah. But the possibilities are endless. Yeah. So. so there is. I can imagine things which are real, and I can imagine things no, which are you a personal which person. are. Figment what, of my imagination. What, what made you believe in Islam? No, but you, you see, you're jumping the gun. Before you, before you learn how to walk, you want to run. No, 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 I want to learn, understand. Okay. Yeah, but before, what you're doing is you're, you're putting the cart before the horse. First, we must learn how to yeah, walk before we learn how to run. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so before you, to me. okay, before you go to saying that I believe in God from an agnostic, which you are, you're coming from an agnostic background. Yes. You must first tackle things which are in our universe, which are real. How you perceive them? How do you understand their origin? Yes. By the way, you you used to be a Christian, am I right? Yeah. Okay. So now you are an agnostic. That's 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 your 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 prerogative, isn't it? So what I want to know, at least logic is something that both a believer and someone who doesn't believe in takes as something which is real. Yes which we believe in, which we know, for but example. I'm not answering my question. No, but you want to, like I said, you want to go to belief and belief in God before you even understand the most basic understanding of our reality. What is our basic understanding? Okay, basic understanding of our reality is that it didn't exist by itself. The universe did not come by itself. So you're saying God created the universe? You see, you're jumping the gun again. Yeah. You keep saying, I don't know. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so you are you are in no position to say who is right and who is wrong because you don't know you see what i mean for example if there was a problem with physics some uh, let's say some formula in mathematics or something and you say i don't even know maths then you cannot say that formula is wrong are you with me so any person and this goes for any atheist any agnostic when they say i don't know they are in no position to say somebody is right or somebody is wrong because if you're going to use that position that I don't know, then don't say that person is right or wrong if they tell you something. Either you stick to I don't know 
But oh, you, you have to believe what they say. I don't have to. No, you don't have to. Yeah. But I'm not going to believe what you say either. For example, if you're going to say that the universe came from nothing, then I'm going to believe that. Of course, that's illogical. That's irrational. You see what I mean? You cannot have something that is contradictory and you say, I accept that without questioning it. That's the reason as, as, as a believer, you know, our book, the Quran, tells us to so ponder. So your basis is the Quran? I mean, you yes. Are, huh? yes. Your foundation is the our Quran? Our foundation is the Quran. As a person who believes in Allah and his Rasul and his angels Supposing and his you books. you don't believe in the Quran, then you have no... You're a, no, you're but I did not. Your argument doesn't hold any water. No, it does. Because I, when I started the conversation with you, I used logic. I did not use the Quran. No, but you said your basis of belief is the Quran. Yes, my Quran tells me to ponder on the science. who doesn't believe in the world. By the way, you know the Quran doesn't tell you not to use your intellect. In fact, it encourages, encourages you to use it. Okay. So my Quran, my basis is quite logical and rational in that sense. That is asking me if that Allah has given you the science. Quran is wrong or it's not logical. No, but you're doing, it, you're doing that again. Do you even believe in logic? Forget the Quran. It's a, it's a way of understanding. I mean. Okay, it's how will you understand the universe without rationality, without logic, without even thinking about it? That God has given you intellect for you to think. If you're not going to utilize even that, then also why? God has given me the intellect to reject him also. Of course. That's called free will. But uh, I don't think, I mean, if God has given you the free will, yeah, there is something wrong with God then. Why? Do you want God to make you a robot? No, I don't think so. Then, then why, what do you want? No. As a human, do you not do you not say that my freedom of uh, free sorry my free will is something I value rather than being like a no, robot to be told and just do according to the the command? For example, you know the angels in Islam we believe that the angels, which are beings other than the human beings, they don't have free will. So they are like robots. They, if they, if Allah tells them to prostrate, they have to prostrate without any uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, they, they cannot protest against that. They have to do as they are told. I mean, religion is very, very tricky. I mean, it's really... No, but for you, even logic is tricky. When I ask you a logical question, did the universe come from nothing? You said that's a tricky question. So you are not even willing but to accept logic. Not, uh, well, we are not studying. I mean, we are in the process of uh, trying to understand... My science. friend, you don't need to study that nothing cannot bring about something. It's logical. If you are go going to be a hyper-skeptical about everything, then even your existence you have to question. Do you exist, my friend? Oh, I'm 100% sure. How are you 100% sure? You could be... I can feel, I can touch. Yeah, but all that can be all that can be generated through stimulus. For example, you could I be... I have some empirical evidence to well, show that... Okay, I what can... is the empirical evidence for your consciousness? I can touch you, I can feel No, no, your consciousness. What is the empirical evidence? Consciousness, again, is going to be another... Uh, Why not? Like, Do you not believe in your consciousness? Yeah, we all have a consciousness. Without empirical evidence, you already believe it, right? No, but can you prove that you have a conscience? I don't think I so. can't empirically, I can't. Yeah. I agree with you. Yes. But you say you wanted empirical evidence, right? Earlier. No, no, that is one way of understanding uh, the truth. No, but would you believe something for which you don't have empirical evidence? We can, but I have never been to Alaska, but I still believe there is Alaska. I mean. No, but I'm not telling you to go to Alaska. I'm asking about something that is within you. It's difficult, I don't know. I, I try to question everything. You know. No, but you cannot. Why don't you question your consciousness then? Have yeah, you, have you questioned no answer. it? Yeah, I did question. And what is the we, answer we, for that? We, we, we all have souls. Okay. I mean, the question for. How do you know you have a soul? You, do you have any empirical evidence for that? No, we don't have any empirical evidence. So why do you say we all have souls? Yeah, On what we, basis? We, there are many I'm atheists. Thinking. I'm talking to you. Yeah. yeah. No, but that doesn't mean. Uh, you know, I can talk to my phone, it's called Siri. <laughs> that doesn't mean do she has that. a soul. No, that's a possibility. I mean. No, but. The, just because somebody talks to you doesn't mean they have a soul. Yeah, definitely. I mean, don't you have a soul? I mean, no, no, I, I mean, look, I'm not an atheist, with what my friend. Uh, I told you my basis is the Quran. Yeah. The Quran says that we have a soul. Yeah, what, but the question I was asking, if your Quran is wrong, somebody proves it that it's wrong or it's wrong. Well, the challenge is still open 1400 years. There's, there's so many controversies about the Quran. Bring us one and gone. Yeah. I mean, there are so many. You see, bring us one, my friend. Huh? They've been it's trying for 1400 years yeah. to bring a contradiction in the Quran because this is a challenge of Allah in the no, Quran. I mean, as it is, it's an open question. You know, you know, I know. What is an open question? That the Quran, there are so many, there are different, uh, that this is the 27 Qurans, they say. Who did you hear that from? It's on the internet everywhere. You oh, know. so you believe everything that's on the internet? No, I don't believe everything. On so the internet. have you done the research yourself? 
No, I didn't do the research. So why do you believe something that is on the internet then? Just it without research? True. It's a possibility. Well, it's a possibility you don't exist. Maybe I'm talking to a, a ghost, you know? Yeah, but I can prove you. I can slap you and say I exist. Obviously. No, but just because a robot can slap you. <laughs> yes? Does it have a soul? Yeah. No, that, that I think, look, if, you're, if you don't even believe in logic, then it would be ridiculous for you no, to I say, don't believe in logic. okay, can the universe come from nothing? See what I mean? worried about the universe. The universe existed before I was alive. It will exist after I die old. No, but the question is, if you do not believe in the reality, yes, then you will not believe in anything. Even your own existence, you will question. Then, don't you think that's a possibility? No, it's not. I know you're real. I know the universe is real. We cannot deny reality. If, you, if you're going to deny reality, then you need to get yourself checked with a doctor, please. <laughs> And that is true, <laughs> because you, there's some psychological, um, uh, I, I don't know, because, problem. Do you, because you question everything doesn't mean you have a psychological No, no, I'm not saying not to question everything, uh. but I'm saying those who deny reality. No, how can you deny reality? How can you deny the earth? How can you deny the height part? Okay, so where did it come from? Huh? Where did you come from? That's, that's good. I can say I came from my parents. Not you, the universe. Huh? Huh? Where did the universe come from? Oh, we don't know. I mean, that is okay. Here's the question. I'll, I'll narrow it down to whether it came from something or nothing. Is it possible for it to come from nothing? When you say nothing, that means there's nothing. I mean. Exactly. Does, yeah. If nothing doesn't exist, is it a possibility for it to come from something that doesn't even exist? But that's why we have a brain and a consciousness. So use consciousness. it. Yeah. Use it. Use your brain. Tell me what does your brain tell you when you try to understand whether something comes that's from nothing. I'm trying to be honest with you and say I don't know. No, but you're not being honest, even with yourself. If nothing doesn't exist, it doesn't even exist. It's not even real. How can it bring a reality, something that is not real? It's you see, this is what... No, it's not complicated. This is where you're denying the most logical explanation that it doesn't... In fact, if you ask someone who's truthful, yes, and who knows the basic of this understanding of reality and imagination, Yes, or something that doesn't even exist, then yes, you are denying the reality. This question comes to my mind. I mean, I'm not worried about the reality of the earth because it will exist whether you live or you die. It will still exist. You know, God will exist whether you believe or not. I can say the same thing. God will exist whether you accept him or you don't accept him. But what is the proof? What is the evidence? What is the proof for the, for the evidence of the universe then? Do you think it came from nothing? Look. I certainly believe that something, if it doesn't exist, then it cannot bring about anything. You said your basis was the Quran, right? because the Quran... Says but I'm using logic with you right now, and you deny even that. So you don't accept logic. Yes, forget about using the Quran, because no, in the Quran logic itself... It's a way of understanding. It's a, it's a method of... No, but you logic. don't use it. That's a problem. You do not even acknowledge logical conclusions. Logical conclusion for something that doesn't even exist, to bring about something that does exist, is illogical. I don't know. I'll have you to see what I mean? You see, what you're doing is you're ignoring your own faculties of reasoning now by saying that it is a possibility for something that doesn't even exist to bring about something. You're, you're actually denying your own self, unfortunately. The only person that you're, you're trying to be skeptical about is your own self right now. So let me tell you, there are certain things that even logic you do not believe that for you to believe in the Quran, to believe in things which are of the uh, uh, metaphysical world, for example. Do you believe in metaphysics? If you believe in your soul, then you believe in metaphysics, yeah? How? No, no scientist will tell you that a soul exists unless he believes in the metaphysical. In philosophy, that's a big question. If you go to any philosophical university, the soul, mind and body, it's a big question in philosophy. It is, but they can't deny it. They can't, they can't deny, it. deny it. They can't prove it also. But that's the point I'm making. Not everything has. Not not everything has. Uh, what do you say? Not not ev everything has empirical evidence. So what you're saying when you go to the university and you can't prove the soul, they are looking for empirical. Let me ask you this: Do you believe science has limitations? Yeah, definitely. Yes. So science, what? Science is based on probability. There's a philosopher called philosophy of. Sorry, what is that? Probability. Yeah, science. They say science. So you don't believe in reality, only probabilities. No, scientific theories. Mine is. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Scientific theories are based on probabilities. Only probabilities? Yeah. Not observation? No, that's, that, that is one. Not observation? That does. I mean, science is only... 
<laughs> Who told you science is only on probabilities? No? Yeah, science, the, the, the philosophy of science. Yeah, but who told you it's only probabilities? If there's a man called Karl Popper, read it, he would, he would tell me. What about, what about it? The Did he say that the only the only realm for science is probabilities? No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> science is many things. For example, if you... Do you know what is empirical evidence? Empirical is your senses. The senses what you have. You touch, you feel, and these are the empirical evidence. That's your senses? Touch, yeah. yeah, that's your five senses. Yeah. Do you know your five senses are based on your consciousness? Without your consciousness, There's your, no your, your five that. senses are pointless. <laughs> Without your consciousness, Imagine you are unconscious. Which of your five senses are going to tell you what happened while you were unconscious? None of them. They'll be useless and pointless. So the very basis, these scientists, you know why the scientists are unable to prove anything beyond the scope of science? Science is based on a formula. They have a hypothesis and they prove it. No, but that's, that's not what I'm trying to get at. I'm, tr I'm trying to make you understand that the reason you cannot use science to understand things of which are beyond the scope of science for example the metaphysical you think religion is beyond the scope of no science. metaphysical for example your 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 consciousness your soul uh, even god even the angels these things are beyond the scope of science so anybody comes and tells me show me empirical evidence of god they do not understand what either science means or what god means I mean, the immediate question is if you can't understand why do you bother about knowing them what do you mean are you saying are you are you saying that just because you cannot understand something you don't have to make an effort to understand it yeah that's that's the logic so why don't you do it for the universe the universe cannot make itself right do you believe the universe is conscious like you and me i don't know you can't, there's no evidence to prove no but could it possibly be conscious maybe a possibility so you think that tree over there could be conscious yeah the trees are they have feelings i mean the trees do have okay what about the clouds yeah, we don't know what the clouds are. No, but do you think it could have a feeling? Maybe the possibilities are. <laughs> this guy will agree with anything. <laughs> no, no, bro, that's a fact. What's a fact? Yeah. Do you, at least do you, do you acknowledge that there are things which are, um, uh, which are sentient and non-sentient? Yeah, the material okay. and non-material. Give me something. No, not material, non-material. Do you know sentient? Means what? what? Explain yourself. Okay, so something which doesn't have, for example, which doesn't have senses for it to feel, for it to observe, for it to feed. For okay. Example. Sentient. So a rock, for example. Do you think that rock is sentient? No, no the rock has no feeling. Okay. What, what about a jellyfish? Do you think a jellyfish is sentient? I don't know. The jellyfish has a consciousness. Of... Does a jellyfish need to eat? Does it know when it needs to feed? Yeah, it does. Animals exactly. Do. So it's sentient. A rock is not sentient, whereas something that has ability to know its surroundings, yes, is conscious, then yes, it's sentient in that sense. So there are lower, there are lower consciousness and higher consciousness. So for example, maybe the jellyfish comes as a lower, and you and me come as a higher, higher uh, beings in consciousness. But anyway, what I'm saying is, we have to acknowledge there are things which have feelings, things don't have feelings. The difference between rock and you for example yes yeah. sentient and non-sentient so in that sense now that you have understood what is sentient and non-sentient do you believe that the universe is sentient the universe i don't think it has any feelings maybe. good so if it if it is not even sentient it cannot create itself can it that's again we're jumping to conclusions I i'm not it's logical i'm using axiomatic understandings of what is logical and illogical. What, for example, if I were to ask you, did you create yourself? How can I create myself? You use logic there, right? Yeah. You use logic. Now I'm asking you the same concept applied to the universe. Can the universe create itself? It's a difficult question. Why? You answered the, for yourself very quickly. Before you even exist, how can you create yourself? It's impossible. If you don't even exist, yeah? How, how is it possible for you to you create yourself? Jump to the conclusion that God created you. It's simple. Yeah. I didn't use the term God yet. Yeah. I'm using logic now. Yeah. But you seem to be denying even that. For me, it's very difficult. I mean, for me, to, for me it's how, how was it not difficult for you to answer the question when I asked you, did you create yourself? How was it not difficult? You answered it very quickly. Why? Because you can see yourself. You cannot see the whole universe. So maybe 
All I ask you is have a have a degree of understanding that if something doesn't even exist, there's no way it can create itself. Because it never existed in the beginning. You see what I mean? So you need you need something. Well, how did you come to the conclusion that there is a God? And what your basis? I think you are fixated on that, aren't you? Yeah. Because I but you but you're denying logic. How can I make you understand? Even the most simplest things, like the universe coming from nothing. You don't even want to acknowledge that. How will I proceed with you? Tell me. There's no way the universe came from nothing. That's impossible, illogical. There's no way the universe created itself because it didn't even exist. Okay? So what is the only possibility left? That there must be someone who is of, of the, who has the ability to create, who has the ability to bring into existence from non-existence. And who's powerful, who is at least uh, intelligent. Yes? If you, if you don't want to call it God, that's fine. Because some people have this baggage that the term God for them is like something that they cannot even use or cannot even approach. Maybe, if you, would you prefer the term, I don't know, intelligent designer? I don't know, I mean, there are so many names. So no, no, what would you prefer? Because it looks like you have some baggage about God, I have a feeling. No, not baggage, I mean, it's just a logical question. Okay. Why did you leave Christianity, if you don't mind me asking? I don't, I didn't leave Christianity. Are you still a Christian? My still name and everything is there. No, no, not by name, by belief. Yeah, by belief. Do you I'm still believe you're a Christian? If you're going to question God? I mean, like I'm there, like a cat on the wall. Like that. Yeah, but you're not a cat on the wall, you're a man. <laughs> <laughs> you're a man in front of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. you you said you're agnostic, isn't it? You're not Christian. Yeah, I'm, I'm reaching that stage. What is the reason you left Christianity? Because there's no evidence, there's no proof, there's no clear-cut evidence. What what proof would you require to believe in God? Something, uh, something to say. Like what? God cook show that uh, yes, that is. No, but what what would that be? Tell me. Would that be? I'm very difficult. Give me. You must have some criteria to say yes. If this, this, and this happens, I'll believe in God. <laughs> I don't know. You haven't thought of a criteria? No, not really. So you, you're not looking for proof then? You're not looking for evidence? Because any person, if you're looking for proof and evidence, you should have some idea of what you're looking for. You see what I mean? You can't just go into the world and say, oh, I need proof for God. But I don't know what that proof is. <laughs> you know, many atheists, when I ask them this question, they say that, oh, if God comes in front of me, and he has, he's powerful, and he tells me that I'm God, then I believe in him. I will never have that is, But that is that criteria. What is your criteria? I don't know. I have to look for a criteria. So maybe that's what you should look for. I mean, these questions, whether we, there is a God or not, that where, where do we come from, why are we here, and where are we going, these questions are not answered. Why not? Do you think your life has a purpose? If you, it depends on individual. You, I'm asking you. Yeah. You're the individual I'm asking. Yeah, I, I do. What is the purpose of your life then? What is the purpose of your life? To do what you want. Well, the animals do that as well. What's the difference between you and animals? There's a lot of difference. What's the difference? Do animals go to college? Do animals go to... So you, you think your, your objective in life is to go to college and that's it? You know, why? Okay, why do you go to college? Why? To learn. I'm back. To learn what? To ask questions. Is there a God? I mean, no, no, but you, you don't only go to ask questions. You also get answers in the at the universities I and colleges. Uh, I got so, any answers. So. You didn't even get answers at the university. No, so I where don't. would you get answers from them? <laughs> that if, is the question. That is the question. I think you have to stop being hyper skeptical first. Okay, at least try to understand the basics like logic. Yes. Otherwise, you will never be satisfied in your life. Yeah? Maybe that could be the problem. So first try to understand, do I acknowledge and accept the reality in this world? Yeah, I do accept. There is the universe, there is you, there is me. Yeah. I'm talking so, to you. So this reality must have come from somewhere. Then you, That's the next question you need to ask. As a logical you person... Easily jump and say, it's God created. I didn't jump. In fact, the very first discussion I had with you was on the basis of logic, not God. Okay? Because I can make you understand from a logical perspective because that is something at least everyone agrees to whether you're atheist agnostic or a believer all of them agree that there are certain logical uh what do you say uh, logical and rational explanations about things which we cannot deny for example the reality of this world 
if someone doesn't even believe in the reality, and like I said to you earlier, they have some psychological problem there. But if you, ex but you, you, you are, you fortunately are not in that position. But you are still hyper skeptical about everything, which is not, which is not bad, provided after you ask the question and you have got the answer, for you to at least recognize the answer is correct. But because you haven't got the what do you say the, the uh, criteria of what the right answer will be, you will forever be asking questions. You see what I mean? Because a person who is honest and sincere and logical, they will have certain criteria that if I reach, if, if I get this answer for this question, then I will be satisfied. But because you haven't even thought about that, am I right? No, you are aware. Okay, so maybe that is the first thing you need to do. Like for example, you're asking question about God. That was your question to me. Why do you believe in God? Yes, because for me as a person who believes in both rationality, logic and in God, God, for me there is no other explanation of how this universe came into existence. No, no logical, rational understanding. Okay, because I know it cannot create, it cannot be created from nothing, because nothing doesn't even exist. So I can put that aside. I know that it cannot create itself, because it didn't even exist before. So that is kind of circular reasoning. Okay, so I can set that aside. And this is logically, I'm using logic. I'm using the deductive reasoning here in order to come to a conclusion which is logical and rational. See what I mean? So the only other possibility is that there must be someone or something to bring this universe into existence. Okay? And that someone or something has to be number one, self-sufficient, self-existing, uncaused. He must have the ability to create. He must be all-powerful and he must be intelligent. But how do we know all these things? Like I said, once you start thinking about what are the criteria for this entity to bring this universe into existence, then you'll come to this conclusion as well. But because you haven't even, I don't know, you haven't even thought about that, you'll forever be asking questions. Because the thing is, look, if I'm looking for something, I should at least know what that something is. Yes? Say for example, I lost a ring. Yes? Now I need to know what that ring looks like. Otherwise, I will be forever searching for it. But you, my friend, you haven't asked these questions, have you? Like, what is God like? If he's a reality, what should he be like? What are the essential attributes of God? And the reason I'm, I'm saying God, maybe you want to use a different, I don't know, term for it or something. Yes? Like an intelligent designer, if you, if you have got some baggage with the term God. You know, why in the university that is something that they will not admit or acknowledge? Because in the university they have made science as, their, uh, as the way for them to affirm everything. But you see, science has got so many limitations like we already agreed earlier. It cannot say you have a soul. You believe in a soul without empirical evidence, without scientific evidence. But you believe in it because that is something you know, your consciousness, you cannot be without. Every faculty of yours, every faculty the scientists use to, to postulate a theory or to use their senses even, it, it all rests on your consciousness. Okay, and it's nice talking to you. Okay, no problem. Likewise, Moses. what's your name? Moses. Moses, wow, yeah. interesting name. <laughs> so anyway, think of the, of the objectives yeah, of your life, of the purpose of your life and also... I didn't, I didn't read the Quran, I should read the Quran. I didn't. Shall I give you a copy of the Quran? No, I will get there are so many everywhere you can get we'll free. give you free one no, everywhere you can get free. but I wouldn't say no to something nice I'm getting free of charge you know no, I can get one it's not not impossible to get one. okay inshallah yeah. make, I, I, we I, make I uh, dua we make we pray that Allah gives you hidayah gives you the guidance before because you see this life for us is temporary oh, yeah, we are one day this will come to an yeah, end definitely. you know there's another reality which no one can deny that that is true. Yes, so whether you are a believer in God or no. disbeliever, that is one reality which no one can deny. Because it is something which is imminent. It is something which we all will experience one day. Doesn't matter when, but one day we will experience that. So, as a Muslim I say that we in this world is a test for us. So sometimes the test might be in the form of a calamity, for example, or in the form of good fortune. Yes? How we react to those things, 
those consequences, conse sorry, the consequences of those, how we react to them, it is what the real test is. So for example, if you have certain death in your family or something, how you react to it will determine what kind of person you are. Yes? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anyway, Moses, thanks a lot for your time. See you. See you. All right. So, yeah, Jazakallah khairan, uh, brothers and sisters, for watching the video, for uh, watching this conversation. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to talk with certain people who, who, don't, who are actually on the fence as to whether they believe in God or not. But I think if you are sincere and if you are honest and if you believe that there is this reality then you should at least ask questions certain questions which make you come to a conclusion whether this reality sorry where this reality came from so ask the questions doesn't matter as as people who believe in free will we have the ability to ask questions and to reason yes it is something which is inbuilt in our in the human being as a rational being so for us to ask questions with sincerity inshallah allah will give you hidayah allah will give you guidance as to what is going to be the uh, sorry he'll give you the answers to questions like what is the purpose of my life you see as muslims we believe that this life is a test in the sense that there are things in this life you have ups and downs in your life how you handle the situation is something which will determine whether you pass the test or not many people they say that oh we have lost all hope because my my mom and my dad died okay we lost all hope because i lost my job we lost all hope because X, Y, and Z happened in my life. But you see, that is not the purpose of your life. Your job, or whether it's your parents or your children, whatever it is, that is something which is a means for you to get around in this world. However, that is not the purpose of your life. Your purpose of the life is to acknowledge and to worship the one true God. Why I say this? Because this is how you will determine whether you become a good person or a bad person in your life. Allah the Most High has granted you the ability to choose between right and wrong, to, between what is something which is uh, halal and which is haram. He has told us clearly in the Quran as to what is permissible and what is forbidden. And these things are necessary in our life to, to, to get around. But what is the purpose of your life is something which we all as human beings have asked ourselves. And as Muslims, we believe that Allah has given us both the hope and has given us the uh, uh, what will happen if you disobey him the consequence for that so be, we live a life between hope and fear and the if you believe in allah and his um, and his messengers and his books and his angels and the life after death this is something which we as muslims have come to understand from the quran alhamdulillah and from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his hadith and so on so every every person has asked this question whether you're an atheist agnostic or believer as to the purpose of your life so alhamdulillah i think allah has given us a life in which we are born free of any sins so which sets us apart from other other religions like christianity where you are born with the original sin where you're born as a sinner and then you have to be baptized to be, to be brought into that religion and then you have to believe in the in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and so on. Alhamdulillah in Islam, we don't have this. We are born pure. With the free will, we are given the ability. We have to determine whether to choose between obedience to Allah, the uh, submission to Allah, submission to the will of Allah, by which you will be termed Muslim. The term Muslim means one who submits to the will of Allah. The religion of Islam is what this is, submission to the will of Allah. So Alhamdulillah, we are not named after any person or any uh, place or anything like that. We the, the term Islam itself is based on submission to the will of the most of the creator of the most high Alhamdulillah, so as I said we are born free We are born without sin and we have to live a life which is free of sin Of course not it's impossible for everyone as a, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said every person is is a, is, is, is a sinner and it is uh, The best of the sinner is the one who repents Alhamdulillah, so inshallah we repent for our sins and we try our utmost uh, best to believe and to worship and to do the will of the one who has created us. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.